Sometimes it's only in the movies that we get to say, I'm sorry, how are you looking? It's only in Hollywood that the prodigal son returns and forgiveness is asked and received. And all the loose ends are tied up before the pennies of clothes. Mr. Toastmaster, I'm the Toastmaster, I guess. In my younger days, I was always, I always felt very awkward and comfortable around people that were reading. I never knew what to say. So I decided to join uh, a premium support group. And that's many years ago now. And I still work with them on a voluntary basis up to the present time. But I do not pretend to know everything there is about breathing. But I would like to share with you some of my experiences, my thoughts, and my feelings. Now, real life is not the movies. And people pass away at plenty of suddenly, unexpected, and there's all the shock. Now, the grieving process in Ireland, in years gone by, was much different than it is today. Uh, when a person died in the community years ago, they got great support from their neighbours because the neighbors came in and took over a lot of the duties that are on the house and the farm that was in a rural area. And a lot of the grieving family had to spend time with their, their families and sit around and let their feelings come and go. And the women wore black for a whole year. And with the men wore black diamond shaped uh, patches on their arm, maybe on their shoulder. And when the year was up, they were expected then to have their grieving done and to come back into the community and to be full-time carers for the family. But in, in every day it's much different because life is much faster now and we don't have as much time to sit around as we used to. And when somebody passes away now, between the time of the week and the funeral, it might be only four to five days. And that's when they get the support from their family and their, and their friend. But in a very short period of time after that, then they're expected to go back into their workplace or into the community or whatever, and to more or less to carry on as if nothing had happened. Now, when we talk about grieving, we can bring up a lot of different emotional feelings. And we won't have time to go through them all tonight. But, uh, if you talk about the sadness, there's uh, loneliness, there's uh, grief, there's uh, guilt, regrets, there's those things, and many more. But shock is one thing as the first, I suppose, feelings that, that you get. A shock. Shock is a, a, it's a protective shell that we form around ourselves to shield us from the reality. And it allows the, the emotional impact to seep through or filter through over a longer period of time. Now, that's is, is uh, something, I suppose, that we're not very good at dealing with, even though we do have multiple losses during our lifetime. And there's so many different types of losses. If it could be your, your partner, your home, your car, even your phone, or maybe money. There's a story about this guy that goes to the pub and spends lots of money on my drinking in the pub. And he doesn't have a clue how much money he's spending. Next morning, he gets out of bed, goes through his pockets to see at the end of money. Couldn't find any of the money. So I was wondering what happened. They decided to go back down to the bar, to the bar where he was, and ask the barman, how much money do you think I spent? And the barman says to him, 
But they said, oh, we should take a piece of hundred euros last night. And he said, because you were here for hours, you bought loads of drink. And the guy says, do you think so? And I say, oh yeah, at least for the hundred euros. Oh, God, the man says, the guy says, that's, a, that's great. You know what? I thought I lost it. And that wasn't the money, it was a bigger problem for us than the expense that they're wasting. So, but the dealing with loss, is what it can have, uh, dealing with loss can isolate families from families. Because everybody deals with loss in their own individual way. Even though they may be breathing the same person. And this can cause isolation. They went to see a man and a woman once that had lost their only son. And they talked to the wife first, met her in the kitchen, and I chatted to her. And I asked her how she was. And she says, well, well, I'm not good. Not good at all, she says. I don't think they have to go on. So I went down. I said to her, well, how is he doing? How is your husband doing? But she says, there's not a bother at him. He's out there in the yard going around whistling and singing. He might as well be married to Phil the Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> I go on to ask him how he's doing, and he gives me more or less the same. He says, I'm not good, I'm not good at all, he says. You know, he says, I have a block of ice in my chest, and I don't think I have any of it. But I don't tell her inside there, because I think she's doing it up there to me. <laughs> so, they were breathing in isolation. Now, it can be very difficult for what, for what to say to people that are in the midst of all those emotions. And I suppose I suggest a few tips maybe that can help you to support somebody. In my experience, I don't think there's any words that you can say that can help, that's going to help the person that's breathing. But to be there for them, and try not to be judgmental. Try not to give advice. And try to be patient with them. They may not be at a, at a pace that we would like. And to listen with empathy. Empathizing is where the healing can take place. It allows them to uh, express their emotion and their feelings. And to make sure, to make sure that it's their feelings you're talking to them about, not your own. It can help them to get through the journey in their own time. And if there is somebody in your life that maybe you haven't told them, you know, that's important to you, and you haven't told them how much you care for them, <coughs> you keep putting that up. Maybe tell them today, not tomorrow, because they may not have to be tomorrow. I suppose myself.